thank you for joining us today. My name is Pastor Carl Gallops. Um, I'm a pastor here on the Gulf Coast, and uh, we thank you for tuning in. My guest today, of course, is Messianic Rabbi Zef Peratt. Not only is he a dear friend of mine for many, many years, but we've written a book together, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and The Identity of Messiah. We've been in ministry together. We each have our separate ministries, but we have agreed to be ministry partners for many years now. And uh, we do conferences together, a lot of media, TV and radio, and trips to Israel and all of these kinds of things. So, Zev, it's always good to be with you. I know you're in Tel Aviv right now, and as we are filming this, it's uh, getting on up in the evening for you. It's still in the uh, in mid-morning for me. I'm on the Gulf Coast, and we have another hurricane bearing down on us. It's crazy. But thanks for taking time to come on today uh, to talk about something very, very important. Thank you. Always an honor and a blessing to be here, Carl. Thank you for having me. And it's great to be in ministry together with you. You have a hurricane coming. We're definitely going to pray for that, for the safety of the people. We have a hurricane here in Israel as well. But the hurricane is not from, uh, from nature. It's from uh, the Orthodox movement. It's from the, the civilians here in Israel who are absolutely going crazy. You know, we live in a small country. It's 9 million people. And when you have a million out of 9 million going crazy, it causes a big riot here in Israel, especially during a lockdown that we're in right now. So it's one side, it's a lockdown. The other side, one million people are losing their mind. Yeah, well, let's talk about that because you're right. There's so much. You and I both have taught and preached and we understand and most of our viewers understand that not only are there political and geopolitical maneuverings going on uh, with good people and evil people all in the mix, but you and I know that there's something very spiritual going on, something very demonic. I mean, it's a cosmic battle and the, and the word of God warns us that as it gets closer to the return of Jesus, these cosmic battles that will spill over into the physical realm, that's what Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, you see the battle in flesh and blood, but that's not where the battle is, it's behind the curtains in the unseen realms of darkness, principalities, so we're watching this happen before our eyes, and a lot of it is being indicated in what's happening to the church around the world particularly in the United States of America, the, the, the largest constitutional republic and largest Christian nation on the planet, and in Israel, particularly now as we're in the feast days, the fall feast days, and oh my gosh, for the first time in Israel's history since it was uh, born again in 1948, um, you guys are under total lockdown during the fall feast, the highest holy days in Israel, and you're under lockdown. I'm going to get you to talk about that in a moment. But so we're in the Feast of Tabernacles now. We're getting ready to conclude it. And you've got some important teaching you need to do on that. But kind of tie it all together. Trumpets, atonement, then tabernacles, and what's going on in Israel. Well, first of all, if you look at it, it is, it is all spiritual. And it has to do with governments like in America, like in Israel. But it also has to do with the fact that God is giving a warning. Now, he gives warnings to all mankind, one warning. But we need to understand that here in Israel, Satan is trying to interrupt with the warning. You say, what, what do you mean by that? I say, well, there are, the Jews here in Israel, over the past five years, I would say, are getting more and more interested in a deeper meaning of the feasts. The yeah. gospel is going forth here in Israel. Satan knows his days are numbered, and therefore he's using the elections in America, the elections here in Israel, the leftists, this is all, you know, just a platform from the enemy. He's using it to try to get the Jews away from God and away from the feast of the Lord. How is he doing it? By having a lockdown here in Israel. There is absolutely no reason for us to be under lockdown. Because if Israel has to be locked down, I'm telling you, the whole world needs to be locked down. Yeah. But it's not, I mean, because, you know, the people are testing. That's true here in Israel. A lot of these tests are not even accurate. Uh, we don't even have a lot of sick people here in Israel. Most of the people that are sick are over 80 years old, over 75 years old, and they're sick either way every year from the flu or something else. We're not, we're not trying to downplay any, any, anybody's life, but we are saying that this is demonic, but it's once again backfiring on the enemy. Why is this, Carl? Because Jews are still searching for truth. Where are they searching for truth right now? Mostly on the internet. That's where we're finding them. There's yes. a lot of people doing a lot of research right now. So the enemy can't stop the internet. Uh, so, we're, so we're preaching on the internet, reaching people that way. Even some people that are willing to meet, we're going out to meet because we have a permit to go out and meet them and doing a lot of ministry. So this is backfiring. We're in the Feast of Tabernacles right now. 
We're still going until Friday. Friday begins the eighth day. I'll touch on that in a minute, but I want to back up a little bit and talk about the three feasts that we've been locked up. First feast Good. we were locked up was the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Atua, the day of blowing. What they recognize here in Israel as the beginning of the year, of course, the Bible says that Aviv, the month of Passover, is the beginning of the year. But having said that, there was a lockdown in the Feast of Trumpets. Trumpets points to, uh, it points to uh, the, the 10 days of awe, which is the days of repentance, the days of, uh, it points to uh, the warning, it points to, for believers, to, with the sound of the trumpet, we meet the Lord in the air and go home. And then it ushers in the Feast of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The word Yom Kippur in Hebrew, Carl, is covering. It means it's a day of covering. Why is that? Because only Jesus, only Yeshua, can take away atonement of sins. John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the sins of the world. And it, it is the only time where, where the high priest in the Old Testament can go into the Holy of Holies. We know that that high priest is really Yeshua, Jesus, who is going to go into the Holy of Holies once and for all for us. And then it ushers in, it's also the opening of the books and the gates and the, you know, the, the book of life. And it, it also ushers in that in the feast, uh, in, in the book of Revelation. And then it ushers in the last and final feast that we're in right now, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, which really points to Revelation 21, 3, behold, the tabernacle of man is now with God forever, and we, and we he will be our God and we will dwell with him forever. That's what it's really pointing about. But we see something very, very important in the Feast of Tabernacles. We see in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 36, that it says it's a seven-day feast with an eight-day added. Yeah. And that's very, very significant because if we're talking about the, the Feast of, of uh, Tabernacles, Asher is in the last and final feast, the seventh feast, which is Tabernacle with Yeshua forever. We can understand why it's a seven-day feast with an eight-day added to it. It points to the new heavens, new earth, new Yerushalayim, new Jerusalem. Now, we have two sets of people looking at these Bible verses. We have believers who are looking at the Bible verses with the Holy Spirit, and we have non-believers or future believers in Yeshua looking at these Bible verses, same Bible verses in Leviticus. One understands them in a deeper way, one doesn't understand them. When the religious leaders were looking at these Bible verses at the time of Yeshua, at the time where Jesus was in his ministry, what they did was they did a water libation ceremony. What they would do is they would pour water on an altar for seven days. They would have an altar. They would pour water and wine. And the water would have a, a thick hole, the blood would have a thinner hole, and the reason was that the water and blood would hit the basin, would hit the altar. Well, that's, why were they doing that? Because they didn't understand the deep meaning of the Feast of, uh, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, what it meant to celebrate for seven days with a great eight day added. Right. Yeshua, Jesus stands up during the water libation ceremony in the book of John chapter seven, verse 37, right. And 38, and this is what he tells the same people that have been blowing shofar's trumpets because they're blowing it from the Feast of Trumpets all the way to the Feast of Tabernacles. They're blowing it. And we know that as believers, it represents with the sound of the trump, we meet the Lord in the air and go home. It's really pointing. So they've got one thing right. You know, in every lie, there's a little bit of truth. But when you're missing the Holy Spirit, then you're celebrating these things. But inside, you can actually point to the gospel. So Jesus gets up in the last and great eighth day which is the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles during the water libation uh, ceremony. And he says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, rivers of living water will flow from within in him. In Hebrew, it actually says the fountain of living waters and the Pharisees, they get very, very upset on him. Why? Because they understood what Bible verse he's, he's pointing to. He was actually quoting from Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And what is, you know, we, we know the word of salvation. You will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Correct. And they're hearing this during the water libation ceremony. It gets even better because if we know that when Yeshua was on the, when he died on the cross for our sins and, and he rose on the third day, we know that the Roman soldier pierced his side. What came out of the side? Water and blood. Correct. What are they pouring on the water libation ceremony for seven days? Water and blood, water and wine. They're doing this in the water libation ceremony. And he gets up and he says, in a few days, I'm going to go to the cross. And if you believe in me, 
It's not water and blood. It's not water and wine. It's blood and water. The yeah. soldier pierces the side of his of, of Yeshua and water and blood. He is the water libation ceremony. He is the altar. And one thing I want to bring out, uh, Carl, when they when they uh, would do this water libation ceremony, they would actually be in the pool of Silan. We know where that is, where Yeshua healed the blind man. They would cross over. They would take the uh, ju uh, juggles of water from the pool of Silan, cross over to the other side of the uh, river, go up to the temple, and they had to go up in white. That to me looks like the book of Revelation. Yeah, yeah. They're going in in white, the high priest, the holy of holies, they're blowing trumpets, the water libation ceremony, and Yeshua stands up and he says this. When we understand the significant meaning of the feast and trumpets, and we see all this, when we read Bible verses like John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38, it comes to life. It has a much, much deeper meaning to it. And I'm just touching here on the surface. Yeah. No, listen, brother, thank you for touching on the surface. No, you did more than that. that. This is great because you and I both teach and preach all of this stuff. You much more eloquently than I, because you were raised in Israel. Hebrew is your first language. Your whole family was Orthodox, still is Orthodox. Uh, and uh, and uh, yet you've come to Yeshua out of the midst of all of that. And now you're ministering the gospel you're, you know, to, to Israel. And one of the most powerful ways you do it is you start with, of course, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, and you show the people in Israel, look, Jesus is all the way through here. The gospel is all the way through here. Salvation in Yeshua is spoken of from Genesis to Malachi. It's all here. Then when you get their interest, and then when they're willing to listen and they ask for more, you move them into the scriptures showing how Jesus has fulfilled all this. Jewish scriptures, the New Testament, written by Jewish authors about a Jewish Messiah who comes to save the world. It's all right there. And so many people, as you said, are being saved in Israel. Um, you know, I just preached last, uh, last Lord's Day on everything you're saying. Again, you did it much more eloquently, but I did. And, and especially I focused on John chapter 7 and, of course, Revelation 21, which is the ultimate fulfillment when, he's, when John says, I heard a voice from the throne saying, Behold, now the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will tabernacle with them, and they will tabernacle with him. There will be no more pain, no more death, no more crying, no more mourning. All things have passed away. Everything new has come. And that is the, the ultimate fulfillment of uh, the – I just had to check something by – <laughs> My screen said that our internet connection was unstable, but anyway, it's good now. Uh, but the ultimate fulfillment of tabernacles is in, uh, is in Jesus Christ in, in the new creation, which is coming. But one of the things that you said, you're talking about John 7 and what he said on that great eighth day, he's saying he is the water of life. And you know, right, and you know this because you've preached it before, but in John 6, right before it, it's, it's all about him declaring that he is the bread of life. He is the unleavened bread. He's the bread that came down from heaven. And, it, it, you know, your forefathers ate manna in the wilderness, but I am the bread of life. And then his, when it comes time for the Feast of Tabernacles, not too long after that, his, his brothers, who were still kind of not believing who he really is yet, and it says that, they say, come on up. If you want to be great, you got to be seen in public. Well, Jesus says, you go ahead. My time has not yet come. Because see, this tabernacles, the ones before this, Jesus would go up with the disciples. But on this one, he's not going to just go up. He is fulfilling it. So he waits to the middle of it. Then he goes to the temple courts and he begins teaching and the crowds come to him. And then on the eighth day, he says, I am the water that you celebrate. I am the water of life. And he's already taught all over the region, I am also the bread. Well, what does tabernacles also celebrate among the Orthodox? It's the fact that God brought them out of the wilderness, put them in the desert, gets ready. I mean, he's brought them out of Egypt, puts them in the wilderness, gets ready to take them to the promised land. But in the meantime, manna from heaven comes, water out of the rock comes. The apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and Jesus is that rock. He is the water that came from the rock. I mean, it's all right there in the scriptures. And on that John 7 tabernacle is when Jesus proclaimed, I am who you've been looking for. He proclaims himself to be God. He says, I am giving you eternal life. Drink of me. I am the living water. Well, nobody can give 
you, you know, eternal life, but God himself. So Jesus is proclaiming that he is God in the flesh. He is the water and he did it on tabernacle. So here we are. But now let's talk about the spiritual aspect. Well, you've already touched on it, but so in Israel, trumpets, atonement, tabernacles, they all come just within weeks of each other in the fall feast. All of them will be ultimately fulfilled at Jesus' return and at the pouring out of God's wrath and then in the recreation of all things. But in the middle of these highest holy days in Israel, the government shuts everything down. There's some rioting going on over there, some, some, uh, some protests. Tell us about all of that. And thank you for letting me speak some of that. It, it's really crazy. Well, it's always great to hear your, your perspective, Carl. This is why God put us together as the one new man. It's uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. And, you know, I, I want to back up a little bit because it's, it's so exciting to hear about the Feast of uh, Tabernacles, and then I'll get to the riots here in Israel. And, you know, the water libation ceremony is, is, is invented by the religious leaders. And I want to, I wanna, it's not something that's in the Bible, but they were doing it based on what they understood in Scripture. And this is because they don't, they don't understand what the Holy Spirit is. They don't have the Holy Spirit. So they got some of it right. But right. they didn't understand what it was, so they invented this water and wine stuff. And then Jesus gets up and says, you don't need all that religion. I am the water. The, I am the bread of life. I am, I am the uh, water libation ceremony. It's me. What's even more amazing is the way they used to light up the wicks. Uh, you know, they, they had these big jars in Jerusalem of, of uh, olive oil. How, and how do they light up the, the, these, these, uh, these jugs in Jerusalem? With the uh, priestly garments that were all stained with blood, they would cut them in four pieces. Jesus, they when they cut up his garments, they cut up the four pieces, and they used to. That's how they used to light it with the. And he's the light of the world. He says it's all about me. So I believe God allowed these uh, religious leaders to have these ceremonies, uh, and because in those ceremonies were a little bit truth, but they were missing it because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And this is how we can minister here in Israel. Right. This is how the believers who are watching this now or in the future can minister to Jews because we use you, you we can use their their little understanding and bring in the gospel. And that's exactly what Yeshua did. But if you back up what you said to John six, where he talks about you know I am the bread of life, the bread of life, and and you know I am the the one without leaven. It's it's me, you know I'm the manna. Uh, that was fulfilled in Passover. But this is the beautiful thing about the feast of the Lord. Even the feasts that were fulfilled, he is the Lamb of God, are forever. This is why we see in the book of Revelation. And I saw one like the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. Because even all the seven feasts are forever, including the ones that were fulfilled. Why? Because Yeshua is the feast. Yeshua is the light. Right. And that, that, this that, is what I want to bring out. But I want to go back up a little bit to what you asked me about the protests here in Israel. Yes. Uh, OK, there are two kinds of protests in Israel. One protest is against Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, who uh, wants to continue to be prime minister, who, who is doing everything he can to hold the government to do whatever he can to stand together with the people of Israel, to protect the people of Israel. He's doing an amazing job. The news, the leftists here are trashing him. It's kind of like in America, the news right now is being mostly controlled by the leftists, even here in Israel. It's unbelievable. We have one news channel, which is N12, the only one right now that's still giving us a little bit of truth. All the other ones have turned against Benjamin Netanyahu, which is actually feeding the, the people of Israel here, which is causing protests here in Israel, violence here in Israel, uh, because you're allowed to have a protest in Israel even during a lockdown. And they're saying Benjamin Netanyahu needs to go home. He needs to resign. He's responsible for the COVID-19. He's responsible for the lockdown. He's responsible for the, everything is Netanyahu's fault. This is what's happening. It's all demonic. It's all spiritual warfare. We know this. Yeah. On the other side, we have the protest of the rabbis here in Israel who say, we're not going to be locked down. We're celebrating the feast. We don't agree to have to be quarantined. We don't agree to have 20 people. Some of them are saying we don't even agree to social distance. We're not going to have 20 people on our sukkah. Sukkah is a temporary dwelling place. We're going to have 1,000 people on our sukkah. We're going to have 2,000 people. And if the police and the military go inside, we're going to fight them. That's exactly what's happening here in Israel. If you see the pictures uh, and the uh, videos that are online, because of the leftists, they're even suppressing those videos. There's footage out there that's a lot more serious than that. Egg throwing, uh, 
rock throwing, violence. Uh, we have 25 police uh, that are in the hospital right now, 40 uh, Orthodox Jews in the hospital right now, arrest. All this is happening because they don't want to social distance and they don't want to put on a mask. And, uh, and I agree with them. You don't need to put on a mask. I don't agree with the way they're handling it, you know, but I do agree with some of the things that they're saying. But uh, again, Jesus, Yeshua had to deal with the same spirit. Can you imagine having to deal with them when we preach the gospel to them? If they get angry about not being a sukkah, can you imagine how angry they get when you preach Yeshua to them? Not all of them. I mean, souls are being saved, but they get very vicious, very angry. We're not coming against the Orthodox Jews. We love them. We love all people. But once again, we have to love them. And, and how do you love people? Really by ministering to them, by by sharing the love of, of Yeshua, Jesus. That's what's happening here in Israel. The protests are a little bit different than America. In America, you're, I, I think that there are more breaking windows and burning down uh, police stations. They are, they're, they are saying right now that they want to burn down police stations here in Israel. They're learning that from the news in America. You know, Not to say that it's America's fault, but I'm just saying Israel likes to, you know, the, the, the leftists here are using the leftists there to feed the people here. It's the same thing. Correct. Same no doubt. No doubt. That's what's happening in Israel. Yeah. And just as most Americans don't agree with all of this demonic stuff, most Israelis don't either. But but the minority is a large minority and they get a lot of media because it's run by the leftists. And of course, that feeds the demonic spirit. It's like pouring a little bit of gasoline every now and then on the fire, just keeping it bursting. And so, no, you're right. And that's, that's Satan's work in these last days. The Bible warned us these kinds of things would happen, this masquerading by Satan and hiding behind governments and pulling the strings of the media and the thrones of power. We're watching it happen. Zev, we got to get out of here. I've really enjoyed talking about this with you. The bottom line is, and I'll give you the last word, but I'm thinking the bottom line is we're living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus Christ. We turned a corner in 2020. The whole world did. The whole world joined together in shutting down churches and synagogues and feast days and, and preaching of the gospel. And, you know, I had a host one time on a TV show not too long ago say, yeah, but the government shut down everything, mosques and Buddhists and Hindus. And my response was, absolutely, Satan had to do that or it would be way too obvious. But the point is that in the midst of shutting down everything, the target then became the church and Israel, the feast days in Israel and the church, the church, not mosque. You never hear of mayor saying they're going to bulldoze mosques down. And there were imams that violated uh, the rules and held services. You never heard anybody put an imam in jail in the United States. They didn't uh, threaten to, to bulldoze the church like they did in Chicago. They, they didn't put imams in jail like they did in Florida and California and other places. So the, the target became the church and the feast days. Well, think about what the Bible speaks of. Satan would target God's people, those that hold to the testimony of Jesus, Revelation 12, and the woman, the one that gave birth to the child, that woman represents Israel, both in Revelation 12 and all the way back in Genesis chapter 36, 34, 35, 36. The, the woman, Israel, and the church, those that hold to the testimony of Jesus. It's right there in the Bible. In the last days, this is where Satan would focus his attacks, and we're watching it. You get the last word, and then we got to get out of here. Uh, the bottom line is, we know why Satan's attacking uh, the believers because there's something inside of us that he doesn't like. And that's yep. called eternal life, salvation, light, and truth. Habakkuk 2.14, you know, the, the Bible says, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge and the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And waters in Hebrew represents blessings. Peter was quoting this Bible verse in 2 Peter 3.13 when he said, nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for the new heavens, new earth, where righteousness will dwell. This word, world, world is falling. Righteousness will dwell only for eternity. What do we need to do right now besides pray? We need to worship. We need to pray. And we need to tell people about Yeshua because the time is getting near. That's, right. that's what it's all about. It's, that's, that, the, the battle is over the gospel. It's over Israel. It's over, it's over the, the remnant. Satan wants to stop the remnant. That's He'll right. do anything he can to do it. He's pulling out his last strings. He's pulling out his last ammunition he's running out of ammunition right. our ammunition never runs out and what zev just said folks go read revelation 12 
read the last words of Revelation 12 specifically, and then realize that it then morphs right into Revelation 13 that says, and the dragon, which Revelation 12 has already told us is Satan, then gave his power to the beast. We're right at the edges of the coming Antichrist system. We're watching it build and build right before our eyes. So much of the church is still asleep to it, Zev. They don't get it. They don't get it. I have had so many Christians tell me, well, I'm just waiting for everything to go back to normal, and then I'll be back at church. Well, it will not go back to normal. It's moving in a straight line towards the culmination, the restitution of all things. And so there's some tough times coming, but hey, we are victorious. We're overcomers because we overcame him by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. Go ahead, Zeph. The best vaccine you can get is the word of God. You know, I just read those Bible verses. It just gets me all energized. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. It's the power of the word of God. That's, the, that's what we need to stand on. There's nothing else to stand on. What you just mentioned about people going back to the church and everything. We have the same thing here in Israel. We have two brothers. Uh, I don't want to mention their names who said, when the COVID-19 is done, we'll get back on track. Yeah. I said, yeah, but maybe the COVID-20 will come. Yeah, well, that's right. It's just like the flu. I mean, we've got strains of flu viruses. And so every year we have the flu and morphing of it and, and strains of it. It's the same thing with COVID. It'll always be here. It'll, ju it'll just morph and, and regenerate and different strains. And we'll have to build different vaccines if, you know, if we're even still here then. But, uh, but you're right. It'll never get back to normal. But but what is normal anyway? I mean, this world has fallen. It belongs to Satan. It's never been perfect and beautiful except for the Garden of Eden. And from there, it's been messed up by humanity and Satan ever since. Zev, listen, thank you, brother. We got it. You, if I keep saying I'm going to give you the last word and then we keep talking, we'll be here for another. Never give, never give a Jew the last word. I know. I know. I found that out. <laughs> but never give a host the last word either. Hey, listen, folks, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you've enjoyed this. We're in the feast days. We're in the most prophetic days since the first coming of Jesus Christ. My guest, Messianic Rabbi Zev Farad out of Tel Aviv, Israel. Check him out at messiahofisraelministries.com, messiahofisraelministries.com. You'll see it scrolling across the bottom quite often during this interview. Check him out and uh, be a part of his ministry. Thank you so much for viewing us today. We love you. God bless you. This has been a word for you from the Word of God.